Yellowstone supervolcano is fueled by heat from below the Pacific Ocean, study finds. All right, uh, this is from University of Illinois at Urbana Campaign, Champaign, from Science News, Science Daily. Um, so where is it coming from? Is it coming from the magma plume from the U.S.-Mexico border, or is there also something else churning and coming away, coming at them from the Pacific? Now, recent stories, it says here, in the national media, magnifying fears of a catastrophic eruption of the Yellowstone volcanic area. But scientists remain uncertain about the likelihood of such an event. To better understand the region's subsurface geology, the geologists have rewound and played back a portion of its geologic history, finding that Yellowstone volcanism is more, far more complex and dynamic than previously thought. Of course, we have to also say that it's a supervolcano. Recent stories in the national media magnifying fears of catastrophic eruption of the Yellowstone volcanic area. Scientists remain uncertain about such an event. The heat needed to drive volcanism usually occurs in areas where tectonic plates meet and one slab of crust slides or subducts under the other. Well, that's what we have on the west coast, the Pacific plate sliding under the North American plate. However, Yellowstone and other volcanic areas of the inland western United States are far away from the active plate boundaries along the west coast. This is uh, geology professor Li Jun Liu said, who led the new research. He said, in these inland cases, a deep-seated heat source known as a mantle plume is suspected of driving crustal melting and surface volcanism. In the new study reported in the journal Nature Geosciences, Liu and graduate students Quan Zhu and Jai Shun Hu used a technical method called seismic tomography to peer deep into the subsurface of the western U.S. and place together the geologic history behind this volcanism. Using supercomputers, the team ran different tectonic scenarios to observe a range of possible geologic histories for the western United States over the past 20 million years. The effort yielded little support for the traditional mantle plume hypothesis. Quote, our goal is to develop a model that matches up with what we see both below ground and on the surface today, Zhu said. And he says, he explains, we call it a hybrid geodynamic model because most of the earlier models either start with an initial condition and move forward or start with the current conditions and move backwards. Our model does both, which gives us more control over the relevant mantle processes. One of the many variables the team entered into their model was heat, hot subsurface material like that in a mantle plume should rise vertically towards the surface. That is from down to up vertically. But that was not what researchers saw in their models with what they uh, concluded coming about in Yellowstone. Quote, it appears that the mantle plume under the western United States is sinking deeper into Earth through time, which seems counterintuitive, Lou said. This suggests something closer to the surface. An oceanic slab originating from the western tectonic boundary is interfering with the rise of the plume. The mantle plume hypothesis has been controversial for many years, and the new findings add to the evidence for a revised tectonic scenario, the researcher said. A robust result from these models is that the heat source behind the extensive inland volcanism actually originated from the shallow oceanic mantle to the west of the Pacific Northwest coast, Liu said. This directly challenges a traditional view that most of the heat came from the plume below Yellowstone. 
Eventually, he says, we hope to consider the chemical data from the volcanic rocks in our model. As you said, that will help us further constrain the source of the magma because rocks from deep mantle plumes and near-surface tectonic plates could have different chemistries. As for the likelihood of a violent demise of Yellowstone occurring anytime soon, the researchers say it's still too early to know. He says, of course, our model cannot predict specific future super eruptions. However, looking back through 20 million years of history, we do not see anything that makes the present day Yellowstone region particularly special, at least not enough to make us suspect that it may do something different from the past when many catastrophic eruptions have occurred. And Liu said, more importantly, this work will give us a better understanding of some of the mysterious processes deep within the Earth, which will help us better understand the consequences of plate tectonics, including the mechanisms of earthquakes and volcanoes. So you see, we have a difference of opinions. This team says that it has to do with the uh, magma coming from the west and others say others say that there is a magma plume from coming from the south and we've even seen thermal images of those and that it was coming from the US Mexican border it was right the beginning of it was right under Ridgecrest by the way and then turning towards Yellowstone supervolcano the uh, High, very high threat, and the high threat volcanoes of California, and then swinging to the east northeast towards Yellowstone. And that was, of course, with evidence from heat sensors with a, a new type of uh, satellite imagery from uh, the European Space Agency. So, what can we say here? I would go. Well, I'm not a geologist, but I would go with the satellite images showing the exact location of the magma plume, which is huge, by the way. It's huge. It's coming from the south, from Mexico, crossing into Ridgecrest, and it's got tentacles. It's not like one uh, jar, one body. It seems to be uh, tentacles like an octopus. The body is like jutting out with branches. And depending on the depth uh, is where most of the plume is located. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.